Welcome to our Binghamton University open house um, for the week. We've got a lot of sessions going on this whole week. Um, you are joining us for part one of our in impact and outcomes session. Uh, my name is Christiana Friedrichsen. I'm one of our admissions counselors and I'm joined here um, today uh, with uh, a lot of our staff from the, the research side. Um, Megan, yep. Perfect. Um, so you can see everybody listed up here, um, some admissions staff, myself and my uh, uh, colleague Stephanie, and then Dr. Valerie Imbrus. Um, she's from the, the Research Center, um, and uh, Megan, as well as Caitlin, and Samantha from FRI. So I just wanted to do a really quick run through of their names. We've got a lot to cover in a really short amount of time. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand it over to Valerie. Oh, please, if you do have questions, please use the Q&A function um, at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we're all going to help answer your questions during um, this presentation. So feel free to put that, them all in the Q&A function and we'll do a live Q&A at the end. And I'll hand it over to Valerie. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight on a Sunday. Um, I'm really happy to share this information with you and that you've all come um, to hear about research at Binghamton because as, as, you, as you might know as you're starting to look at schools um, for where you'll, you'll attend college, um, Binghamton is a public research university and as of last year we became um, a, a research university that's designated nationally in a classification that means we're the highest research activity or what was called an R1 institution and we're really proud of that and we've really worked hard to increase the research profile of the university through hiring new faculty and also investing in undergraduate research. So one of the things that we feel is unique about us is that we have many um, wonderful opportunities for you as incoming freshmen to get involved in research and we can support you doing research throughout your four years so that as an undergraduate you can be part of that really exciting ground breaking work that's being done at Binghamton. Um, I mean we've been so responsive to changes through the times. Um, we have cutting edge research going on right now related to um, the pandemic, for example, one of our system scientists was doing models that our hospital system and our university have used to base the decision making on, on how to handle the virus on our campus. Um, and so we really work hard to have undergraduates be a part of these enterprises. So um, as an undergrad, you know, don't worry, you're not, you wouldn't be thrown into anything without mentorship. We consider undergraduate research to be a mentor supported pursuit. So helping you find faculty who can help you along in your interests or that you might develop interest around what they do. Um, undergraduate research is understood not only to be, you know, exciting and fun, but a really rewarding educational experience. So the things that you want to get, the kind of skills that you want to get out of college in general, critical thinking, you know, independent learning, building your self-confidence, building your ability to write and communicate oral presentations, those kinds of things are all, all really well learned through engaging in research as a hands-on activity. So um, one of the things that I do is I direct the Undergraduate Research Center, which is an office on campus that's dedicated to supporting undergraduates through monetary awards, um, we pay students to do summer research, for example. We have awards that are like mini grants. If you have a project and you need to buy some materials or you wanna travel somewhere, um, you wanna present your work at conferences, if you wanna publish your work, we have venues for that. We have a journal um, just for that. Um, and we throw a sort of annual event every year called Research Days, um, which undergraduates are the center of that event. Uh, presenting and talking about their research in a really fun, lively, engaging conference setting um, in person or virtual as we have learned to do over this past year. Okay. So next slide, please. Thanks. Um, 
how many students do this at Binghamton? You know, out of our thousands of undergraduates, we really work hard to make research available to all kinds of students um, starting in your freshman year. So it's not too early to start your first year. Um, and up to a third of our students by the time they're seniors engage in research. Um, and like I said, that's not you know, something that just happens. It's something that you'll, you'll be encouraged and talk to about and you'll be provided with the kind of resources and guidance to be able to do that. And, you know, we do just as well, if not um, better in many cases than our peer institutions. So other schools that you might um, be looking at, um, undergraduates at Binghamton have a really good opportunity to do research. And it's one of these areas, it's one of these kind of high impact areas, high impact learning areas that Binghamton is invested in, like study abroad or doing internships. Um, doing uh, kind of working for community organizations, community engaged learning. And um, research actually is the most common thing that students do in their first year out of those four high impact learning experiences. And, and some of that's in part of, because the really, of the really excellent first year programs that we have, which you'll hear about our freshman research immersion um, and the source project, which we'll, we'll just talk about in a minute. Okay. So next slide, please. Um, one of the signature programs that my office runs, and this is just one of many different kinds of summer research programs that, um, that the university supports, but you might have heard me mention, you know, students get paid to do research over the summer. We see it as equivalent to a job, right? We wouldn't want students to have to choose to work um, for pay over the summer in, in, um, instead of doing research. And so, um, you know, in many cases, as research professionals, as faculty, you might get a fellowship, um, which is a monetary award to support your research pursuit. And so we treat students the very same, same way. And you can apply to us, create a proposal to do work, and, um, and we'll pay you $3,500 over the summer. And like I said, this is one of many programs, but if you, know, if you do, if and when you do come to Binghamton, you can reach out to, to myself or any one of the advisors in my office to learn more about other programs at our university and national programs that any undergraduate can do um, to be paid over the summer to do research. And this happens in all disciplines. So one thing I, I really find that's common um, as a misconception amongst incoming students is that they think research is synonymous with the sciences because and I totally understand why I mean you going through high school it's very clear what science research is you have lab sections you're you're brought into the scientific method you know asking questions right gathering evidence um, but that basic process of asking questions and gathering evidence happens in any discipline. And so when we talk about research, we also talk about creative inquiry. Um, we're talking about the fine arts, as well as the performing arts, um, design, theater, right, creative writing, <clears throat> as well as the natural sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities, history, English, we support students all across the university in so many different kinds of pursuits. Like you see these students here on this slide, you know, Zoe doing wetlands biology kind of out there in the marshes, right? Taking samples of plants to look at plant growth and development in response to environmental changes. Um, Larissa, who is a history student who worked with a Russian studies professor, um, to do actually a documentary, a short documentary, which she wanted to use in K through 12 classrooms to, to educate students or before they get to college about some of the misconceptions of, about Russia and American relations. Um, biomedical engineering, we have students who are working with um, different cell lines to create prototypes of lungs and kidneys. Um, that can that can better function um, for um, intervention in clinical settings, right? Um, and psychology is a huge um, program in our area where students do everything from social psych to cognitive psych, experimenting on animal models as well as you know asking people questions. Okay, next slide, please. 
Um, so in these kinds of projects, we, like I mentioned, we support students. We want you to, we, like I said, we treat you like researchers. We want you to get involved in this idea of if you're doing research, it's worth paying for, and there's people out there to pay for it. And so we act as that, that organization. Um, and you can see here, you know, students across our areas, nursing, engineering, right, social science, humanities, arts, and science and math, right, filling up a large portion of, our, of the awards that we give out. Um, and these awards might range from $200 for a semester project up to $1,000. Um, we have, you know, a project um, this year that we just award, we just made these awards and we decided to award a student who's working on um, a behavioral economics project in response to COVID. You know, what is it, what are the biases involved in people wearing masks or not wearing masks, right? And she's working on that question and we just made an award for her to do that. So she has the statistical package on her computer, um, the statistical software, so she can make those analyses. Um, travel grants. Um, it's hard to travel right now. We all know that, but there's virtual conferences. And when we're back to, you know, traveling in person, we send students around the nation to present their work. These are really great resume builders, as well as just terrific experiences for students to go and present their work at conferences. Um, you can go online to Binghamton.edu and look up Alpenglow, the Binghamton University Undergraduate Journal. It's online, it's open source, it's a journal that we publish um, one issue every year and includes multimedia publications, um, artwork, poetry, um, performance, music, musical performances, theater performances that students do, as well as research papers. Um, across the disciplines um, that we have a peer review process internally. Our faculty and advanced graduate students read the work of undergraduates, give them feedback, right? So we can publish that and you as an undergraduate can put your work out there in the world for other people to read. And this is, you might think, well, who's going to read that? But actually a lot of people read this. You, there's some papers that have been done on metrics of, um, of downloads of undergraduate um, work and you know what the download rates are higher and faster growing in some cases than some um, peer review publication in um, kind of professional scholarship right so go ahead go check out Alpenglow and see the kind of work that they're no we're, we're actually meeting with the editorial committee next week to work on on this um, year's issue um, like I said students present their work so um, research days happens every April and you see the pictures here on the right side of the slide. This is sort of what the in-person, you know, looks like it's a really high energy event. You know, hundreds of people, hundreds of people are presenting, hundreds of people are coming through, you know, all day on a Friday um, in our university union and students are just having lots of conversation about the things that they care about and the work that they're doing in their classes. Um, or, you know, in their summer programs or in the things that they're volunteering or, or working to do outside of their classwork, the research that they're doing. Um, this year in April, you know, just like, you know, we, we had to all kind of jump and go online. It was three weeks before research days. And um, we figured out how to quickly mount the whole conference online. And so you can see this poster to the left um, was one of my students in my course. Um, who worked on a local issue, the toxic plume in Endicott, which is a you know, result of industrial pollution that's happened in our area, a legacy of, of the computer manufacturing that's happened in our area. And, you know, she was able to have this poster online. You can go, you know, one of the, I think, silver linings of working virtually is that there's a lot more content online. So you can see the URL at the bottom of the screen here, sites.google.com. We use to mount the Research Days 2020 um, presentations and all the student posters are up there. So you can go and look and see what our students are doing and what the outcome of their work has been. Um, and another thing that I do in my office is work with students, um, me as well as my and my team of advisors. We work with students once they've they've done research, they're they're becoming more accomplished towards the end of their undergraduate years. They're thinking about post back opportunities or graduate school. We work with students to apply to 
um, nationally competitive fellowships and scholarships um, to you know earn money to go to graduate school or be paid to go abroad and continue pursuing their dreams. Um, and so we work with students to find opportunities as well as craft really well written applications. You know, we work very closely one on one with students guiding them through this entire process. So if you go to the next slide, you can see some example programs that Binghamton University students have been very successful in um, are Fulbright. You might have heard of Fulbright. It's a long running program in the United States um, supported by the Department of State sends um, US students abroad every year to go teach English or do research um, in a whole host of international locations. And every year we send, you know, at least seven um, Binghamton students abroad to, to, to be Fulbrighters. Um, and it's because they've done the work, you know, at Binghamton, they've had the opportunities that they've taken advantage of the opportunities at Binghamton to make themselves you know, eligible um, for these awards. Um, Caitlin was a biology student who also was an education minor. She wanted to become a science teacher. And so she applied to do a Fulbright in the Netherlands where she, she taught English to Dutch students. And she also did an educational research project where she was able to compare, you know, the Netherlands system have really high science outcomes and science um, education attainments and she was able to look at that to bring some of that knowledge back forward into her profession as a science teacher in the US. Um, Rebecca Mancusi was a Goldwater winner. She was a bio biomedical engineering student who won the Goldwater scholarship, which is one of the few scholarships that supports, you know, up to $8,000 of tuition during your junior and senior years as an undergraduate. And that's a research based award. Um, so these are the kinds of things that you can work towards at Binghamton and we will help you with. Um, we have some other special programs that are supported um, by our federal government. Right now we have a program called the Smart Energy Scholars Program that if you're interested in chemistry or mechanical engineering um, or physics and you want to take a focus on uh, our renewable energy or smart energy alternative energy future, which is so important for society right now. Um, we have a scholarship where we can offer you know, $10,000 towards tuition. You kind of become a cohort of students and you have some other opportunities, learning opportunities, as well as internships and, and research. Um, so if this is um, a possibility for you, you can by all means reach out to James Pitaresi or myself um, after this if this looks like something you're, you're interested in. But these are the kind of opportunities we work for um, to have for student for our students. Okay, the next program here I wanna mention to you um, is the McNair Scholars Program. This is another program that if, you know, if and when you become a Binghamton University student, um, this can help you as you're applying and preparing for graduate school. So a little down the road, I know you're just thinking about undergrad right now, but I, many of our incoming students at Binghamton already have ambitions to go to graduate school. And so we have this program for students who have been traditionally underrepresented in, in, um, in graduate student, in graduate degree attainment, masters and PhDs um, for, you know, help, helping, you know, apply to schools, pick out schools. Um, preparing them with research. So a summer research program. We just launched a winter kind of high impact learning program this, this winter since we have a long winter break this year. Um, our McNair students will be um, able to garner resources. So, um, you know, get paid to do internships as well as research um, or maybe pick up a micro credential, you know, spend a couple of weeks learning Python or um, so a statistical package um, or systems science and modeling, um, something like that. Um, so I'm gonna spend the last kind of few minutes of this presentation um, talking about our exclusive first year research immersion program in humanities and social sciences, right? You'll, you'll hear about our scientific program in a little bit. Um, but this source project uh, we're going into our fourth year already, which it seems like just yesterday we started this program. Uh, it's a two semester program. So as you can see in this slide, this act, this image actually was created by, it was a, a graphic that was designed by a Binghamton University student to show the myriad things that, 
that students who are doing research or creative, creative activity. Um, the source project, you know, why we wanted to have something that complemented our FRI, um, that really inspires students to be curious and rewards them for that. So asking questions, right? Interpreting, learning how to interpret data to answer those questions. Um, that's, these are skills that are transferable across the disciplines. Uh, you know, like I mentioned in the beginning, research, we just feel it, it and we feel, but it's also been shown through, through, through very rigorous study um, that it really does confer many benefits to students. So um, the source project courses are all topics that are, that are impactful, that are sort of current, that are timely for the moment. And our students, you know, engage, they often get our O general education credit, you know, oral presentation and writing. We focus on those two skills in particular. Students are always talking to one another, presenting to other audiences, as well as writing about their work in multiple, multiple kinds of forms from research reports to abstracts to maybe policy statements um, or um, a voter guide or something. And one of my students created last year. So, um, basically, what the source project is, is it's a fall and spring sequence of classes, four credits each, each semester. The classes, the, the courses themselves each semester are no different than any other four credits in terms of their expectations or time on task. Um, but these are small classes, which is something that is rare within your intro level courses at a public research university. So there's small classes, you get to know your faculty instructor very well, you get to know your other students. We, are, we use these learning studios, um, which are really nice, like comfortable classrooms with modular furniture and, and um, all of your technological needs. Um, our, our students present at research days so that the, our annual conference, our first year students are presenting there. And our first year students are also, they're also publishing in different venues. Um, that we have on campus. So coming up <clears throat> this year, the, the course um, offerings, the research streams um, change slightly each year. We are really, I'm really proud and pleased to be able to offer a course on pandemics. Um, this is taught by a historian. You'll look at pandemics in the past. You'll have a chance to focus work on our current pandemic. Um, disinformation and naivete, this is also very timely as we see a lot of mismanagement of information, a lot of myth making that's really affecting our policy making and our politics. Um, you'll look at kind of disinformation as it, as it kind of negatively um, influences international relations. History and capitalism, kind of capitalism is a fundamental process that shapes sort of everything that we do. Right. We have a course in art history that looks at materials and how artists use them in paintings. Um, again, Im immigration, another very timely issue, and a course on an environment and people in politics, which is uh, a course that, that I teach. Uh, and we focus on Binghamton as our kind of case study in looking at human environment relations. So uh, we, these are active learning classrooms, student-centered, we have guest lecturers, students participate in our research days, but also other conferences or opportunities that their faculty mentors have. Um, they're, you know, we get students out of the classroom as much as we can. Even this semester, my students are doing a lot of, of guided field trips on their own. Um, just to, to get off campus, to go into our nature preserve on campus. Um, a couple of our classes are called community engaged learning opportunities. And, you know, students, we, we kind of track our student experience pretty carefully. Um, and, you know, students really, really see the difference in these classes compared to the other typical classes that they're taking in their schedule, particularly the small size becomes very personal and building social networks and having um, a very supported kind of engaged learning experience with other students where they get to know one another, like my students typically do a group me together, you know, they're, they're in contact with one another. Um, I've been keeping in contact with my students and offering them other opportunities since they come out of my classes. 
Um, so that's been that's been a really important part of the student experience, as well as the academic experience, you know, students feeling like, wow, they're expected to do work that their professors are doing, but on their level, right, at the, at the first, what level is appropriate for a first year student, but really seeing what it's like to be engaged as a research professional. So some of the student outcomes we've had, um, students have gone on at the summer after the source project to do an internship in England to work direct, directly with refugees where they've had bearing on refugee cases um, um, in the UK. Um, we had a student who worked with her faculty mentor the, the year after the source project to, to mount an exhibition in our art museum on campus. And, and I've worked with source project students now on applying to nationally competitive um, scholarship programs like the Truman program, which supports students doing um, public service work. Okay. And um, I just want you to know down here we have this ask an ambassador and don't as a prospective student feel free to use this service. If you go to binghamton.edu and look up, you know, the undergraduate research center um, site. Um, student research and scholarship, you can see in the URL every Monday through Thursday evening, you can directly connect with an undergraduate student who's doing research at Binghamton now. So please, if you want to talk directly one on one with a student, absolutely use that service. Okay, I think that is all. Yes, so Dr. Fegley, please go ahead. Hi everyone, so I'm Dr. Megan Fegley. I'm the director of our first year research immersion program here at Binghamton and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about our program. So uh, this is a program that is for science and engineering students and students are getting an authentic research experience when they go through this program. Um, they're looking at really important real world topics and digging into those, finding out what's known in the literature, what's unknown and what types of questions they can generate and then um, go through determining what kind of experiments, instrumentation protocols can be used to help answer those questions and in the process discovering um, new information that has not yet been um, known. So it's very exciting. Um, types of research that students are doing. In addition to the research end of it, students are also gaining a lot of career readiness skills. So they're learning how to problem solve because um, in the research process, oh, I have a guest here. Um, in the research process, there's a lot of determining what's working and then when something's not working, trying to figure out how to solve that and move forward with the research. Um, students learn a lot of collaboration skills. Um, so they are working in teams each semester of the program. And within that, working in those teams, they're learning how to become leaders. And they are also, we also focus on communication skills, both oral and written communication skills. So students are learning how to present their research through PowerPoint presentations, elevator talks, um, and poster sessions. So throughout the program, they get to participate in two poster presentations. Um, we focus a lot too on professionalism and technical skills. So our program is a three semester program, which is a little bit different from the source project. The first semester is a research method seminar. It's two credits. And then our second and third semesters are when students are in the lab. And one thing I like to mention to students is that this is a program that's not in addition to your degree process. It's really part of it because each semester of the program, students are going to get those courses counted towards their degree in some way. So um, each one of our courses counts for um, some type of general education requirement. And then our second and third semester courses also count towards a student's major. Um, so, and it could be a one-for-one -one swap of a course that you need to take for your major. 
Um, so our first semester course, um, like I mentioned, is a seminar. Students are working in teams on a project, digging into the literature, finding out what's known and what's unknown, and developing a research question and then presenting on that. Then in the second semester, you get into the lab, you start learning techniques and protocols, um, and then developing a research proposal for the research that you'll conduct in your third semester. We have 10 different research streams right now, and they can be clustered into two main areas. So the first one is biological and health sciences. And I'm not gonna go into details here because we have a lot of information um, on our website, but students in both the Harper Arts and Science College and also um, the Watson Engineering College are able um, to partake in our research streams. And then our second cluster is the physical and applied sciences. So these are more the engineering, um, environmental, chemistry, physics, those types of disciplines. And you can see that we have a lot of variety. Um, and I encourage you to explore more about each of these streams. So each of our research streams has a dedicated laboratory. Um, so it's only FRI students in that specific stream that are working in those laboratories. Um, we also have research grade equipment and supplies in each of these labs. And you can see these are two of our labs. Um, the top photo is our microbial biofilms and human health uh, research stream lab. And then in the middle here we have our molecular and biomedical anthropology stream. And then in the bottom is our uh, classroom. And this is, uh, we designed it for active learning and group work. And so almost all of our FRI courses are held in this classroom. Um, each research stream also has a research educator. So this is um, the professor that works with the students in the research stream on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they teach all the courses and um, our mentors for the students as they're working on their research. We also have undergraduate peer mentors for each research stream. These are students who have gone through the FRI program and then become mentors for the next cohort of students. And then um, we also have small class sizes where we have 30 students per research stream. And then each research stream has a team of three to five faculty members that collaborate with the stream. So um, tonight I have two representatives from the FRI program here with me and I'm going to turn it over to them to introduce themselves. So we'll start with um, Dr. Caitlin Light who is the research educator for the biofilm stream. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Caitlin Light and uh, like Dr. Fagley said, I am the research educator for our microbial biofilms and human health stream, which is basically a microbiology stream. Um, the kinds of projects that uh, we work on in my lab and in my stream are really geared at understanding how um, bacteria, when they live in these microbial communities together, um, become more resistant to the kinds of therapies and treatments that we currently have available um, and how they spread their resistance. So the better we can understand the ways they do this, the better we could apply that understanding to uh, treatments and uh, novel therapies uh, to combat uh, this growing problem that we see um, in, in our hospitals. Hi everyone, I'm Samantha. I am in my third um, and final semester of the FRI program right now and I'm also a undergraduate peer mentor. I'm a double major in environmental science and geology and I'm in the environmental visualization stream. And my like overviewing topic has been genocide and mass atrocity prevention. So for the first two semesters, I was working on tracking sex trafficking within the United States um, but COVID kind of messed up that project. So now I'm using satellite technology to try to tra track different genocides um, overseas. And we are specifically looking at the Rohingya Muslim related genocide happening in Myanmar currently. All right, so I just wanted to say um, that's all we have for the FRI program, but I hope that you have questions because we've left time now um, to answer questions that you have live and um, 
I think it's great to get the perspective from a student. So I hope that and encourage you to ask questions um, that Samantha can answer. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Stephanie Swim. I work in Binghamton Admissions. I'm going to be asking all these wonderful people the questions that you may have today. Let me see if any. So um, my first question is just a general question for any, any one of you wonderful panelists. Um, how easy is it to get involved in research at Binghamton and is the research at Binghamton more competitively based in terms of applying to research if you're not invited initially into um, either the Source Project or the FRI program? Um, you want to know how competitive it is to get into research programs if you're not in one of these first year programs? Yes, or just kind of uh, be involved in research in general. At yeah. um, so, you know, there's, there's kind of, I think, three different avenues for getting involved in, in research. Um, if you don't come through one of our first year programs like SOURCE or FRI, um, and, you know, the first line in any of those three pathways is really coming to our office. That's why we're here. We have advising appointments um, that are virtual now, you know, all throughout the week. It's very easy to get an appointment. And, um, and we'll talk to you specifically about, you know, how to reach out to faculty, how to, how to even find out about what research is happening at Binghamton so that you know where you might develop an interest or where there's something happening that meets one of your interests um, and then how to get to know the people involved. So then we would advise you on which faculty, how to talk to faculty, how to find faculty, right? Other students maybe that are doing research and we put you in touch and so you could start doing that kind of social networking. That's one pathway. Um, the other pathway is just understanding that research happens in the curriculum in courses aside from source and FRI that you might make certain choices as you're constructing your schedule of classes for the next semester that include courses that have a research component. Um, and then finally, there are summer programs and there, kind, there are um, you know, summer programs at our university as well as at other universities that you might apply to. Um, and those do, those do get competitive. So it's best to sort of start at Binghamton through one of those first two pathways before you start those other pathways. Um, but for example, you know, the FRI program has the summer research immersion program, and that's another great entry into research. Um, and so we can help you identify those things. Um, so, you know, if I, I really feel and from what I've seen from students that if you if you want, really want to do research, you will find a way to do it through one of those three pathways. Right. That's great. Thank you so much, Valerie. All right, so we do have some questions popping up, which is great. Um, I have one for Samantha. Um, how did you narrow down your research? How did you narrow down on your research as an environmental student? Um, also, in addition to that, um, we do have, um, just to kind of add to that question um, mm -hmm. for Samantha, besides the research experience, what is the biggest benefit of participating in the FRI program or doing research early at Binghamton? Great questions. Okay, so let me think. I'll start with the second question. So I'm not going to lie. I was someone that was very like, I'm not going to do research when I'm in college. Like when I went on college tours and stuff, that was never really something that I paid attention to. And then I got the like the invitation from Binghamton and it was such a great, it was really such a great idea to end up doing it. Um, so sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought here now. That happens to me sometimes. The the second the first question was how did you narrow down your research as an yeah, environmental yeah. Okay. student? So the way that it works is I, as I said before, I'm in the environmental visualization stream. So we were given there was a I believe I have six groups uh, or five groups, and you have different research topics that you were given that you could choose between. So my like big topic was genocide and mass atrocity prevention. There's one that um, has to do with harmful algal blooms. There's one that has to do with something called um, unexplode, unexploded ordinance, which is, it has to do with like landmines and stuff. Um, one group has to do with like Lyme disease. So there's a whole bunch of different um, like main topics that you were given. And then, so you chose one. My group was interested in the um, GMAP one, Genocide and Mass Atrocity Prevention. And from them, we just kind of figured out what we were going to do. We kind of narrowed it down. It was hard. Um, 
it does take some time. And then like, I'm also, like I said before, I'm a UGPM. So I'm also working with first year students right now. And they're like still trying to figure out exactly what their question is. But you just kind of brainstorm, you talk to your professors, you talk to your UGPMs and they help you out a lot. Well, thank you so much, Samantha. You answered those so well. Um, I have a question that I can answer. Um, as working in admissions, um, the question is, what are the criteria to be qualified for, for the first year research immersion program? And also this wasn't asked, but I can, I can answer that for source as well. Um, when you apply to Binghamton, essentially the process for this is when you apply to Binghamton, your application to Binghamton is also essentially an application to either one of these programs. So um, there's different things that us as, as admissions counselors look at in your application that might kind of be indicators that we want to recommend you um, to be invited into these programs. Um, perhaps an interest in research, um, some experience in, in research or certain um, STEM or social science fields that um, stands out to us. Um, maybe something on, you might have written an essay that that talks about your inclination to um, having an interest in doing research or um, just a background or a general background that we think would make you a good fit. So um, there's just different things that we, we look for in, when you apply to Binghamton um, that, that kind of helps us push you to, for a recommendation into one of those programs. Also, I think you've seen this on the chat. Um, Christy has provided an interest form. I has also provided it as well. Um, for FRI, you can fill out an interest form on our website um, you know, that, that is helpful for you in terms of um, maybe, maybe getting you into those programs. So um, again, it's invitation only, but yes, there's definitely different things that we look at on the application that helps us kind of push you in that direction. All right, let me see if there's anything else here. Um, I have a question actually for um, both Valerie and Megan or, or whoever else would, would be happy to answer it. Um, what, what, is, what are some FRI projects uh, for, for Megan maybe that, that stand out to you that, that you've seen in the last, you know, recently or throughout the years that stood out to you? What are an F, a, a project that um, you thought was really exceptional and then same for Valerie in terms of source? Sure. So um, one of the projects that students in the, and this is just the first one that's coming to my mind because we've got so many different projects going on, but um, students in the environmental visualization stream, we're doing a project on detecting plastic landmines. And it was a project that they submitted to National Geographic and they ended up being runner up on that and they've been able to publish that research, but it's um, really important research because there's a lot of these plastic landmines um, that have been left behind after um, different wars in different countries um, and they're very dangerous and there's not an easy way to detect them because they are plastic. And so they've been using geospatial remote sensing to detect those uh, landmines. Oh, that's great. And Valerie, do you have um, something that stands out for, for you in terms of, of source? And, yeah, and, and just to just to build on the, the project that Megan um, picked, um, because this shows kind of the compatibility between the Undergraduate Research Center and FRI, or like an exemplar pathway that the student, two of those students on that team that um, were looking at detection of plastic landmines, um, we worked with after the FRI um, one of those students applied to the National Science Foundation's Graduate Research Fellowship, which we helped him with that application, which he, he received, um, he wound up receiving our um, provost award for undergraduate research and going to Yale for his uh, PhD work. And the other student also applied to the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship and won that fellowship, which is um, a very um, prestigious award to go to graduate school. And he's going to Columbia this year. Um, so really exemplar students. Um, in the source project, um, we've had, uh, we have such a diverse array of students, but one of the students I got to know last year um, in the human nature project where they looked at big questions of gender um, and race, um, a student was working on gender discrimination, you know, who wound up doing a survey with people who identify as, as asexual, but really, and so got all of these data from, you know, from people and their views on, on you know, current topics on gender pronouns and what, it, what their gender means to them, but also looked up some of the history of gender discrimination as, it, as um, asexuality used to be 
seen as a medical disorder, right? And sort of charting the cultural change around some of these ideas and, and then the policies um, and kind of attitudes that people have around them. Uh, you know, a student in, in, in my, the students in my class last year, um, environment, people and politics, you know, did such kind of unique first person research in our area in Binghamton. I mean, often small towns um, or middle sized cities like ours don't have people on the ground doing ethnographic research. And so we're working on a publication for our undergraduate journal based on that student's work that we hope will come out in spring. We're working on that now. And so as a class, um, although each student's research were separate, you know, looking at the toxic plume that I showed you, looking at incarceration, looking at um, housing, um, housing security in Binghamton, um, education will come together to form like a fuller picture of what life in our area is like. Wow, that's great. And Caitlin, do you have any input on, um, you know, just from, from, for, from your specific stream and area that, that you can speak of? Uh, with regards to um, like standout topics? Yes, or, or just yeah. certain projects that you found. Um, so one thing that's kind of important to note is that all of these different research streams um, and science disciplines in general move at uh, very different paces. Um, so with my stream, we've been working um, for almost three years now as um, three different cohorts of FRI students and two different cohorts of our summer research immersion students. And we finally have a paper in publication or, or um, in peer review right now on its second round. Um, so that's really exciting for um, our stream and for our kind of biomedical research streams where um, things uh, can take uh, quite a bit longer and needing to be a lot more in depth and rigorous um, with just the meticulous level of details that you need. So that's very exciting uh, for us and I think for those kinds of streams. Um, and it speaks to the collaborative nature of our program and the fact that we can kind of keep a research project running um, for almost two and a half or three years now. So I'm very excited about that. Wow, thank you so much, Caitlin. Uh, I do have another question. Um, I'm going to give this one to Samantha because it kind of provides more of a student perspective. Um, I would say, so Samantha, how approachable did you think, um, you know, generally at Binghamton from your experience, were, were professors pro more approachable in terms of, um, you know, in terms of accessing research, research with them or, or, or kind of doing research projects with them, an individual study, if you will. And, um, you know, if they're, if not, or if, if you experience that they were or weren't, um, in addition, are there other resources that you can kind of take advantage of um, if you're having a difficult time um, finding a mentor in that way? Mm -hmm. So I, the only research that I participated in um, so far has been through the FRI program. I haven't done anything else yet. I do have friends that have though, um, and I've never heard any complaints about stuff like that. I think that honestly, the professors at Binghamton like are a really like nice group of people and I really like them all. I haven't had any ones that I really didn't like yet. Um, and they all really are very willing to help even when it comes to like going to office hours and stuff aside from the research stuff. Um, but the professor that I've been working with for the past like year and a half is like the most amazing person. I love him. He's been so great. He's been really helpful. Um, he's been, you know, he doesn't like tell us the answers to everything, but he does definitely like, like I was saying before I had to start my project over, which is like super unfortunate, but we have to do it because of COVID. And he like was talking to us the other day and he was like, I'm expecting really big things from this. I really believe in you guys. And so that's really nice to hear. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say in response to that question. Yeah. And if I could add to that as well, um, I think that, um, that is something that you can hear very often times uh, with large R1 research institutions, but I think that that is the reason that the SOURCE project and our FRI are here because it really provides a great opportunity in your first year uh, to really find that mentor that Samantha was talking about. Um, you 
get to work with a professor like myself for three semesters in a row, really build that relationship, learn how to network and navigate uh, the research landscape on campus, um, feel more confident approaching those professors. Um, the, these kind of programs um, are really, really great opportunity to make sure you never kind of experience anything like that. While I don't believe that um, that's a majority on our campus, uh, the, it, it's always something that you can experience. Um, but like I said, uh, having that mentor that you can go to um, coming through one of these programs is a super invaluable uh, resource for you guys to have in um, being comfortable uh, on campus. Yeah, yeah, so I'll just jump in a little bit on that and just add to what um, Caitlin was saying. So the research educators that work for the FRI program, that is their sole responsibility is to work with the FRI program and they're really unique positions that combine both research and teaching. So the individuals that are in these types of positions are interested in both teaching and research. So I think they're really um, amazing mentors because they see both sides and the importance for both sides. And so um, it's just, it's, and then in addition to that, we have teams of faculty that are collaborating with these streams so you can see that the faculty on campus really want to be part of and see um, young undergraduates doing research on campus. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. I have another question here. Might be our last one tonight, unless you guys want to shoot us a couple more. Um, so how many students each year for a first year class um, are generally invited into FRI? And then for Valerie, how many are invited into Source? Okay, well, we have, we'll have our six research streams that accommodate 25 students each. So that's 150 students. We have uh, placements to enroll. Um, many more invitations than that go out. And the admissions team know, knows that, um, you know, better than anyone else, um, that many more are invited. And we really, I just met with the director of admissions last week, actually, to talk about our recruiting and how we invite students. Um, and we really look, you know, holistically across the admissions pool um, on measures of like, you know, what are your interests? Um, how much have you challenged yourself in, in high school? And, um, you know, so you can receive an invitation that way. And we look very broadly at different measures. We want to be as inclusive as possible for all kinds of students. Um, but you could also submit your interest. And, you know, since Source Project is, is still, you know, relatively new and our streams are new, um, I found that students who express their interest through the interest form on our website, we look at everything and often, you um, those students have a really good chance at being invited. So I think if it's something you're really passionate about, your best bet is to reach out, fill out that interest form, get in touch, um, and, and you'll at least have a conversation, if not an invitation. And I can just add um, very similar to what Valerie was saying. The only difference is that with FRI, we have 10 research streams. So we're able to enroll uh, 300 new students every year. Great, thank you so much. All right, so it looks like that's that's it for questions. Thank you guys so much for coming. Make sure you you do one last look at that ch that chat uh, at the bottom of the screen. We've got some, Christy's provided some really great links for you in terms of contacts, um, learning more about both FRI and Source. She she gave that the links to both those sites. Um, also information on reaching out to us in admissions. Our visit page. She will be uh, sharing with you hopefully now, uh, our visit page has a lot of different, um, you know, different offerings, virtual offerings this year. Um, in addition to these wonderful open house sessions this week, um, you can view some webinars both on FRI and Source that are previously recorded sessions, um, as well as other uh, research, undergraduate research opportunities at Binghamton and among other, other great information, all Binghamton related. Um, so definitely check out the admissions homepage or visit page. Um, check out the links, copy and paste them. And thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Samantha. For, for being such wonderful panelists and giving our, our students such great information going forward. Bye everybody, have a great night, take care.